Hey guys, it's May May, and today we're going to make a gift. How many of you guys are looking for gift ideas that you can kind of produce fairly quickly that don't look like you produce them very quickly? Well, that's what this is today, and I made one of these for my mother and my mother-in-law years ago, and they loved them. Um, my mom still has it on her desk, and I thought, you know, this is a super easy quick big payoff project and with all of us trying to get our Christmas gifts together I think you guys might like this one so hang on we'll see how it goes the first thing I wanted to talk to you guys about this um, today was this value pack mat board that I get from Hobby Lobby now at $9.99 this is a great deal because you get 35 pieces of 12 by 12 very heavy mat board um, I like to use it in place of chipboard for like book covers and things because it's so sturdy. But the best part is if you look on the clearance aisle at Hobby Lobby, you can get this huge pack for $5.99. So be sure to check that out because this stuff, look, I can make books for days. But can you imagine how many books you can make out of this for $5.99? Good deal. So go check that out. Just a good deal alert. And check this out. Now, I can't get you a deal on this because I don't know what, I don't even know if you could still get it anymore, but my wonderful subscriber and friend Judy Garner sent me a package full of goodies and this was in it. And I've been thinking, what am I going to do with that pad? This is it. I'm going to use this today to create this book. Now, the book we're going to create is a, a greeting card holder book. And um, I'll show you how it works as we get going. But I really wanted to use this paper because it'll give me a nice, cohesive look. And I can use everything out of here and not have to even dig into any other paper packs. Um, but feel free to, when you make yours, mix and match. It's no big deal. You can do whatever you want to with that. So the first thing I'm going to do is decide how many um, pages I want in my book. And I typically like to do six pages because they're double-sided. And that will give you a pocket for each month of the year. So, But probably the first thing we want to do is find our covers. <laughs> you know, because you don't want to use paper that you decide will be your cover. Look how gorgeous. Oh my gosh, just so beautiful. And I tell you what, before I dig too far, because I've looked through this before, I really love a Harlequin pattern. And I think I want this to be my cover and my background and the back. So I'm going to go ahead and tear this page out for that. So that way I don't mess myself up and use all of my paper. I'm actually going to tear out both of the pieces of it just so I have it in case anything happens. So that way I do not waste this. That's just a tip. If you know you want your cover to look a certain way, go ahead and reserve those pages and put them aside so you don't mess with them. Okay. Now another thing I want to point out to you is this. Because this paper is pattern paper and absolutely beautiful, I don't really want to use it for my pages. And the reason is I want my pages to be plain so when I put cards in them, they really pop. So that way each page is not very busy. So what I've done, we'll move this aside is I have found some very generic, um, just brown 12 by 12 paper. It's from Recollections. I picked this up at Michael's on sale during their, um, I think it was right after their Black Friday sale. And I'm gonna remove these little stickers that come on it. And I've gotten six pieces of this 12 by 12 brown paper. So I'm just gonna go ahead and prep it by removing all the stickers and we'll get started folding. All right, guys, so I've widened my screen so you can see this entire 12 by 12 piece of paper, but I have it in my Martha Stewart 12 by 12 scoreboard, okay? So you can't really see the scoreboard, but that's what it's sitting in. And the score marks are super simple. You're going to score this 12 by 12 page at 6, right down the middle. I'm trying to teach myself not to be so heavy-handed with my scoring. I tend to rip the page. I'm so bad about that, so I'm trying to just do really light passes. And once you've done it at the six inch mark, you're gonna flip your, or turn your page one turn, okay? And this is where you're gonna do your pockets. Now you have freedom here. You can make your pockets as deep as you want or as shallow as you want. I feel like about a three and a half to four inch pocket is a good, healthy pocket, okay? So what, so what I'm gonna do is, is score my paper where I'll have a three inch flap. So a three and a half inch flap. So I'm gonna score it at eight and a half. And then I will show you what you get. Now the reason I'm doing my pages first and not my covers is because my pages will decide how big my covers are going to be. So let me show you what we've done, okay? We have folded it at eight and a half. I mean, we've, we've scored it at eight and a half, so we're going to fold that up. Go ahead and get that lined up nice and neatly, okay? And I'm going to burnish that really well, just like that. And now, we're just going to take this and fold it back, okay? So we folded the bottom up, 
And then our six inch score, we're gonna fold back. If you hear little extra noises today, my puppy's in the room with me. She's not a puppy, she's so old, but I call her a puppy. So Trixie is below my feet, you may hear her down here. <laughs> okay, so this becomes a page. Look how easy this was to do. Now, if you are so inclined, you can also add a pocket to the top, but the reason I'm not going to is because I'm looking for speed out of this project. So I don't wanna have to seal the bottoms. I, wanna, I don't wanna have to do any of that. We're looking for a quick, easy craft. Now, this becomes the pocket that holds your cards. The only thing you need to remember when making the cards for this is a six by six is not gonna fit in here, okay? So you wanna keep your cards to A2 or five by seven because five will fit and seven will fit. Make sense? So just make sure you keep your cards the right size. And we're gonna do this again five more times. So I'll do it one more with you guys and then I'll do the rest off screen. So we're gonna score it six inches. So just score in our 12 inch paper right down the middle. Okay, I'm gonna flip it one turn, and then I'm gonna score to eight and a half and create that pocket. Okay, now I will fold my pocket up. I like to just make sure my score lines line up there in the middle when I do the fold, that way it keeps me square. Do a little pressing, and then we're gonna fold this inward on that score line, creating a page. Now when you do this fold here, things get a little unwieldy and a little messy because of the bulk of the pocket at the bottom. Don't worry, just close it like you want it shut and then score it into place. That'll kind of help you out and get you a much flatter page. It kind of manipulates the fibers in the paper and gets it to lay down good. So there's two pages, so let me show you. When this goes in the book, they'll be like this, okay? So I'm gonna do the other ones and we'll get right back together. So here we go, we now have six pages. And remember how I told you I like to use six pages? That's so you can have January cards, February cards, and all the way through you'll have 12 months. So these will stack up, and these will become our card holding pages. Okay, now the other thing I want to do is my cover. So since I have um, folded these pages using, let me just pull one away, <laughs> since I've you know, scored at six and folded up. I'm gonna see what my dimensions turned out to be. And that is eight and a half tall, okay? Because that's where we scored the bottom. And I should be six inches wide, and I am. So what I wanna decide is how big my cover should be. And I want my cover to be a little bit bigger than the book, just to give um, protection to these pages. So for my cover, here's what I'm gonna do. I want it to be a quarter of an inch taller here, a quarter of an inch taller here, but the side, I'm gonna seal this with either my cinch or binding rings, so I don't have to have this side hang over at all, but I do want the front to hang over. So I'm gonna cut my front cover at six and a quarter by nine. And that way I'll have a quarter of an inch here and a quarter of an inch here, but be flush here. So let me get my um, chipboard out or my mat board. I love this mat board. And I'm going to tell you, I was on the fence a long time about buying it. I don't know why, because mostly because I recycle so much of my chipboard just from, just from packages and things. But this chipboard is such quality. And if I'm giving a gift like this, I really want to make sure it lasts for a long time. And that's why I finally said I'm buying that stuff, because I need it. All right, so we're going to cut this first piece at six and a quarter. So just line that up. And with a rotary cutter, you just cut back and forth until you feel it go through. It doesn't take much. Don't get rid of this because you can use it. It may not be the right size for this book, but it will work in future books. Okay. So now I need this one to be nine inches. So I need to take off three inches from this side. Go right here. I have my mat board cut and I wanna show you. These colors don't match exactly. Look, one is black and one is burgundy. Now, if you wanted your cover to be burgundy, it's done, there you go. The biggest thing I was looking for was that these have the colored core, because I'm gonna cover them with paper anyway. Now, some of the mat board in that stack has a white core, so just be mindful of that when you're making your project. So now I have a back cover. Well, I'm gonna get it in here kind of like it should be and hold it up. So giving us a quarter of an inch at the top. And then I have a top cover, which I'm gonna cover with paper. And so you'll be able to see that our pages will be protected inside of the little bit of lip we left around the book, which I think that is gonna be awesome. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is put these pages aside for now. 
and I'm going to cover these. Now I'm going to show you a product that I have gotten from Jamie at Punch Place Plus. This is a full sheet of adhesive and it's sticky back adhesive, a lot like what I use on the roll. And this stuff is going to be my savior. I do not want to use wet adhesive because I don't want it to um, bow or warp in any way. So what I'm going to do is peel one side of this back. So I'm peeling it back wide enough to use it on my cover and then I'm just going to crease that and I'm going to place my cover in this top corner. I'm going to turn this where I can see it really well. And I'm going to cover the entire piece in sticky back adhesive. This way I know that this entire cover will have adhesive on it and that my pretty paper won't come off. Now, of course, you can use liquid. If you're in a hurry, I like to use the dry adhesive. Um, this may be overkill, but I just like the idea of that cover not coming off. So now I'm just going to run my X-Acto knife right down the side. Just like so. Okay. And then the other side. And this way, when I put... When I peel that off, I have adhesive everywhere. I did miss it a little bit because it wasn't cut real straight, but I can fix that too. Now I'm going to go ahead and do the other side. I'll go ahead and do cover this one, and then I'll cover the next one off camera. So here's what we're going to do. We're just going to peel this backer off now. Look at all that adhesive. Isn't that awesome? Try not to touch it too much because it is sticky. Now then, I'm going to flip this over and decide. I really like this portion there, but there's a little bit of an um, edge I'm not in love with. So what I'm going to do is stick this down right past that little perforated edge and then trim that off. I'm going to line this up on one edge of the paper. Again, if any hangs off, you can trim it. And I'm going to stick this down. These covers are going to be amazing because I'm not going to have to worry about them. So now, cut this guy away. Look at that. It is so professional. There's no air bubbles. It is so smooth. Do you see this? It looks like this board came that way. I am in love. But you know what I gotta do? I gotta pick the paper for the inside cover. So same thing, I'm going to peel this little backer piece off. Look how sticky this is. I'm barely touching it. Barely. It is so sticky. Okay. Now I'm going to lay this down. I'm going to flip it this way because of that perforated edge. I'm going to do the same thing and trim a little bit of that off. So now I have my front cover and interior, my back and the back. Now I want to show you something. I made a mistake. I didn't pay attention to my paper the way it lays and I say this all the time and I did it wrong. So I'm either going to cover this with a different page or I'm just going to put some embellishments to kind of hide the fact that it's upside down. But I'll figure that out and it's the back anyway because I want the inside to look like this. So we're in good shape. Don't worry. You're going to make mistakes. It's no big deal. It's not the end of the world. You can cover them up. It's just paper. I'm telling myself that because I'm disappointed. <laughs> but it happens. Okay. So now we have to decide what I'm going to put on the back because I need to know if I'm going to fix this with the same paper. I think I'll just use a different paper. It'll be fine and it'll look better that way. Now let's see what we're looking like. Pretty. Okay, so we have our interiors like this and our exteriors. That'll be pretty on the back, but I love Harlequin. All right, so when we put these guys inside, we have this and we have this. Now, something I have learned from using my cinch, because I do want to use my cinch for this, is that it's better to go ahead and mat anything you're going to mat before you poke the holes. If you don't, then you end up with a funny, um, a funny cut because of where the binder goes. So if you don't know what a cinch is, I'll show you that in a few minutes. It'll make more sense. But I'm going to go ahead and mat these pieces. So I'm going to measure 
and this is three and a half by should be six it is and I want to mat these at three and one quarter by five and three quarters so I have six pieces of the paper here and my rotary trimmer and now what I'm gonna do is place these and I've made sure that my perforated edge is at the top so I know that the top of all the pages is that way I'm gonna go to my three and a quarter mark because I want this to be three and one quarter wide and I want to show you even though I'm using six pieces of paper I still have all of this left I'm not going to use so I will come back to my book to my pack and put this inside so when I need it it'll be there so it se I'm sure it seemed a little wasteful the way I was doing six different pieces of paper, but it's going to work out. So now I need these to be five and three quarters long. And when you're doing something like this, make sure you measure four times before you cut. Make sure you're doing it right because you don't want to waste a bunch of paper. All right, so there's six mats done and the other six done. So I did those pretty quick. So now I have all the mats I need for my little... Now you can use whatever adhesive you would want to for these. I personally like to use this sticky back tape because I know it's going to stay in place. It will take a little longer, but you know it's not going anywhere. I mean, you could use your ATG. Um, just sometimes I found over time ATG can release. So I like it for cards, especially if people aren't going to keep a card forever. But it makes me nervous sometimes for books and things like that. Okay. Now just any that I have left over, I'm going to tuck in. And then we're going to mat the first one. So your first pocket is matted. Then we'll flip it over and go to our next piece. And remember, you're going to have different sides. So it won't really matter as long as you're not, you know, as long as you flip them you'll be all right. Just pay attention to what you use each time. So now I have this, these pockets matted on both sides and I can do the rest of the book, the rest of the pages, and then we will get back together. Okay guys, so this is my cinch and I am going to attempt to use it today. Now what a cinch does is it is basically a hole punch with a whole bunch of holes that run right here and it will line up with one of these guys. So you've probably seen these in the store and that's how I'm gonna bind this album. Now, like I said, not extremely good at this thing and not exactly sure how to use it, but we're gonna try to figure it out together. So what you do is you measure the length of your cover and mine is nine inches and then you put the halfway mark this little um, ruler slides out so you put the halfway mark where it says center and I know you can't see the little center but there's a little place there to tell me that and then you just put this guy all the way up in okay and punch and you end up with these beautiful perfect holes Isn't that great let me do the other one It seems so intimidating. This is only like the second time, maybe the third time I've ever used it because it just seems so intimidating. But look how simple that is. And they're perfect and they'll line up perfectly. Now I'm going to do the same thing with my pages. But this time my pages are not nine inches. Remember, my pages are eight and a half. So I'm going to move this and make the center say four and a quarter and slide the pages inside. Now I probably can do multiples at one time, but I'm just going to do one at a time to be safe. So I'm keeping my cinch in the shark because we're going to come back to it. But I used every one of the hole punches, so that means I have 12 holes, which means I need to make sure I have 12 prongs on this guy. Now they actually come long like this, and I got mine at Hobby Lobby. That's really long, like 12 inches. But I'm going to cut this down. And this is my 12th prong, so I'm going to cut it away right here. And I'm just going to use some wire snips for that. All right, now for the trick. What you do is you assemble your book. This is my cover. This is the inside cover. These are my pages. Okay? And this will be the back cover. Now what you want to do is take your back cover 
and flip it to the front. The reason you do this is it hides the workings of this on the inside by doing that. The next thing you want to do is line your holes up so you can feed these guys through. And you feed those in so that we're all sideways like this, okay? You turn this dial until you get this lined up with the correct size that matches your little binding pieces. I wish I knew the name of them, but I don't. Then you slip this into the side of this machine, let it rest on the bottom, and press down. Now you can watch from the side to make sure you don't overlap anyway, but if you have it set correctly, it should only go as far as it's supposed to go. Now once you've pressed it, you see how it closes so nice and clean? So nice. And then you just take the back, and it closes all of those workings on the inside. And you just close your book. So all the binding is on the inside, and you just get this nice, clean ring around the edge. Isn't that beautiful? And look at this. This is not hard to make, guys. Now it's just decorated. Now we just got to dress it up. I gotta tell you, I could get used to using that cinch machine. I know I could use it for all kinds of gifts. Now, if you don't have a cinch, do not panic. You can just use a hole punch, punch through, and use rings. That's actually what I did for my moms and my mother-in-laws, because I didn't have the cinch at the time. I got it for Christmas that year. So, look how neat I'm ready to decorate. So, I wanna show you this too. Remember how I told you you need to mat beforehand? Because if you don't, you end up having to mat a funny section. And I like, those being sealed in like that. I think it makes it look more professional because it's, you know, together. All right, let's talk about the inside. I want to do a pocket here and here. I have a good bit of this left, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to decide, now that I have this piece on, I need to do a new measurement for myself so I can know where I'm at. That takes me now to... A little less than six inches so I'm gonna make a five inch do I make a five I'll make a five and a half inch pocket all right so let's work on that five and a half by three and a half now because I want my pocket to be five and a half by three and a half and I want to make it so that I can use dry adhesive to put it on I'm gonna do some fold under flaps so we'll need to cut it at six and a half long Okay, and four wide. Now because I'm going to do two, I went ahead and cut two pieces that are six and a half by four. And I'm going to score them half an inch in on three sides. So on the six inch side, I'll score it at half. I'm going to flip it over. Score it again at six inches, which gives me half an inch in. And then I'm going to put it in and score it at three and a half. This will give me the pocket I'm looking for. Same thing with this one. Half an inch in from the short side, half an inch in from the long side, half an inch in from the short side, and I'm not going to score the top. This is the edge, okay? Now all you need to do is make a couple little slices. I'm going to slice one score mark at the bottom, and I'll show you what I'm doing. You see I've kind of cut that one little piece just up to the score mark. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Now I'm going to cut this whole square away. The reason is, I have found if you don't cut them away and you tuck them in, they can sometimes get in the way when you slide stuff in the pocket. So I'm just going to cut those corners away so our pocket will end up looking like that. Okay? And then I'm going to fold my flaps in. The reason I like to do this with flaps is because I can then use dry adhesive and I don't have to worry about having to use wet adhesive to keep things from sticking. So I'm going to put some adhesive down. And because I want to make sure I have it all the way to the end and I don't have any half inch wide, I put some down, I lift it up the backer, and then I put the next piece next to it. So that way I know that'll be enough. From what I found on projects to give as gifts, don't skip on the adhesive. <laughs> People don't really know how you make these and how you put them together, so you you never know where you're going to get pressure points. Somebody may tug or pull on the pocket. Um, you just don't know because they, they don't see them assembled. So be sure to put plenty of adhesive. It's better to be safe 
than to have a gift that falls apart. All right, now to make this guy go in super simple, here's what we're going to do. We're going to turn this piece in, turn this piece in, and put this flap up over it and use that adhesive, that is the stickiest adhesive, to seal it down. So you see how I did that? I just used those two side pieces to seal that. So when I go to put it in the book, it'll be much easier to do. Now, I don't like to um, do anything more than just fold these because I like for the pocket to have a little lift on it. So I'm going to bring the book over. I'm going to line this up where I want it. Which is about right here. Stick down that bottom. And then the sides. Now, because we did this, we could use dry adhesive, and it's going to stay in place, and it gives us a little bit of lift. So when someone goes to slide something in, it's not totally flat, and they're not having to fight right here. You can also put a whole, like a punch here if you want like a half punch, but because my lines are so straight, I just left it straight. Now I'm going to do the front one real quick. Okay, I got the front one ready, and I'm going to look through and line it up to the other one. that bottom into place and then the sides. So I printed out all of the words for the months of the year to go into the pockets. Then I trimmed them using my paper trimmer and I want to show you what I do is I find a spot on my trimmer arm to be my guide and like for this one I just used this first clear opening and then that way when I trim them they're all trimmed the same. I just line the words up to that clear opening and then I know they're the same. So I did that with all of them. So once I had these cut down, I used my little angle cutter from We Are Memory Keepers. It's like a crocodile, but it cuts a tag instead. You see that? I think that's super cool. And then run some adhesive on the back and just stick it onto a piece of the leftover, the little scraps that we had left over and trim this out just to leave a border around the edge something like that then I did the angle again now that was a quick way of showing you how to do that but I did that with all of the months of the year so you can see now they all look like tags cute huh so these guys I'm going to put onto all of the pockets in our book, and we'll start with January. So here's January, and it's going to go just like that. So I'm going to use this Art Glitter Glue with this fine tip. It dries really fast, and I can get it right to the edge. Just kind of scrub that around. And you can put the word straight or on an angle. And I like on an angle. That way, if I'm not exactly perfect, it won't show my flub. So I'm going to flip this. And now do February. Right here. And then I'm going to do March. Am I going to bond it? Here it is. And I'm just going to go through the whole book and put these down. Okay, so let's do a flip through. We've got January. <laughs> I panic. There we go. January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, and December. Now, the idea behind this, if you hadn't got that already, is all the people you need to send your cards to in January, you can put their cards in this pocket. Your February cards in this one, your March in this one, your April in this one. The cool thing about using the cinch is that you get a lot of space. And I'm going to put cards in here so I'll show you how that works. Let's go to the cover. I'm excited about this. I dug through a whole bunch of stuff to see what we're going to put on here. And I'm just going to play around and look and see what I like best. One thing for sure is I have this trim I got at Michael's from a um, from Christmas stuff, Christmas clearance last year. And I think some gold would be so pretty on here. Just kind of, um, it'll just give it a shimmer. So I think I'm going to put some here. And I might even run some going the other direction too. Let me trim some of this off. 
Now I'm going to try my best to be kind of shabby vintage. You guys know I don't do it well. But I'm going to try my best using these items that have been sent to me. I think I'll be in better shape because they um, kind of lend themselves. <laughs> the items look very vintage. I'm going to use hot glue for this and this is going to be a little bit unwieldy but I really want this to stick down. So I'm just kind of rubbing this across. It's kind of fibrous. So I'm just going to kind of scratch the surface of this to kind of get this down. Like so. And I'm just going to bring it to the edge and put that down. And I'm going to put stuff on top and on top. And we're really going to kind of build the decorations up on top of this. So let's see. Do I want one going in the other direction? I just really like the look of that. So let's put a dot here. And I'll trim that away. I'm going to get it started up there. Then I'll just come down. Kind of scratching the surface. There we go. I'm just going to cut this off at the edge. Miss Judy sent me so many things and I was digging through all of it. And these little guys are in there and this little guy is in there, which I really like. But I also found in my stash some of these mixed media little canvas pieces from the paper studio. And I got these at Hobby Lobby on clearance a while back. And I just kind of thought this might be really cute on the front of this if I stamped it. So let me show you what I'm going to do. I found this stamp that says too much of a good thing can be wonderful. <laughs> and I like that saying. So I'm going to use some stays on ink. And I'm going to do it in brown. I just think it'll be pretty. Now my brown is really drying up. So we'll see what we can get. And... If it's, you know, not a full, perfect stamp, it'll be fine. This stamp's not made to look perfect anyway. I haven't used this brown in so long. I'm really inking that bad boy up. All right, I'm going to flip this over because I think I'll get a better stamp that way. And then I'm just going to sit this on. Kind of to the top so I can decorate at the bottom. Now, because I'm pressing this to canvas, I'm going to let it sit for a minute and hope that a lot of that ink will transfer. Anytime you're using wood blocks, press the centers really well, especially on these big guys. It's not bad. It's very light. Let me bring it up. It's very light, but I think it'll look good. You can see it. You'll be able to read it on the front. So we're going to use that. Especially since the text in the back is so faded, that looks really good, actually. All right, I'm going to adhere that down, and I'm going to use hot glue again. And I kind of like the idea of this fraying more and more as the person has it. So I didn't take the hot glue all the way to the edge. I kind of left an edge, so maybe this will fray more and more as it goes. I also found this swirl in some of the stuff Miss Judy sent me, and I was thinking it might look good. So there's one thing we can use. I found these beautiful trinkets from Bow Bunny. And this one right here just really spoke to me. So I'm going to sit that there. We might use those. I found these pretty brown flowers and these beautiful brads. And I love these here at the top that have a little color. I thought those might look good. All this we're just kind of feeling around at this point. I found these guys when I was digging through. Are those brads? They are. They'll be pretty in those flowers. And then this. Miss Judy sent me so much stuff. I have to use some of this on here. So I'm thinking I'm going to run some right here. I just think that looks perfect right there. So back to the hot glue. And I like the edges. I hope they fray more. Then let's see. This swirl is so pretty, but I just don't know about it. Maybe if it was going in that direction. I kind of would like to put the flowers on or around it. I think it looks pretty good like that. And then if we put 
the flowers. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it's not dark enough. I've got an idea. Let's try something. Since everything seems to be so dark, let's do this. Let's use some stays on and see if we can make it darker just by inking it. And I'm just literally laying the ink pad on top of it and letting it hit where it hits. I like the way that looks already. So bring the book back and see. Oh, yep. Now I just absolutely love it. And I like this piece showing down here. So that's what we're going to do. And I'm going to peel the adhesive sticky part off the back and do hot glue. Because I don't trust just the adhesive. So I'm going to take advantage of both kinds of adhesive on the back. Get my fingers inky. <laughs> That's all right. So there's that. I love how that looks. Now let's see what else. I like these flowers. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I like that. Let me get this little piece out of here. Because I just really like how this looks. I think it would be pretty in that flower. And these to have the brads on them. Let's do that. So I think I want to use these um, blingy brads. Yeah, the green is really pretty. And let's see if we do an amber also. Yep, those colors are going to look nice. So I know I should probably use more, for, like layer these up or something, but I think this is going to work. I don't have anything to layer them with. But see how pretty that looks? I think that'll work. But you could layer these together. I'm just going to do them just like this. And I may put something under him, so before I put him down, and, okay, I'm going to make a decision. Because I'm giving this away, this is a brad, and it'll stick through there, and I know I can adhere it down really good, where this is not, and I don't want to wait on that to dry with some industrial strength glue. So I'm going to use this piece in this flower, which is dark, but I might can come back and do something to kind of bling it up. I think that'll be pretty on there. Very vintage. And then this guy over here. Like that. Alright, before we do that, let's look at other things. I have this creamy ribbon that is so pretty. I think I'm going to tie a bow to put underneath those. Just something. Just a bunny ear bow. We'll just see how that turns out. This ribbon is really um, stiff. And I think that'll be good for this for the way we're going to use it. I also think it'll help that flower to really pop off the front. I left the tails really long on that because I'm not sure where I'm going to end up adhering the tails down. Because I'll probably kind of loop them up. Something like that. Okay, let's lay this back. And that gives me just enough dimension. Because I did want a little bit of dimension, but not too much on the front. Let's put this guy down. Then this guy. No. Do we want to put something under there? Let me look. What if we put a little more of that gold under there? And I'm not going to adhere it down all the way. I'm actually going to glue it to the flower in the middle and let the edges stay lifted up so maybe they'll kind of get ragged over time. Just kind of leave that loose. Alright, for the bow I'm going to do a little dovetail down here. Just like that. And do a little one down here. Yep, I like the dovetails. I think that looks good. Then I'm going to adhere that down too. With just a little lift on it. And let 
like so. Now also in all the goodies from Miss Judy were these bling pieces. And I think we can put some on here. I really like that green. And I love that pearl. I think I'm going to put that pearl right there and probably some more places. And I'm going to use my art glitter glue for that. Because it dries quick and it will hold it for me. So I'm going to put a good bit so you might see it before it dries. But once it dries it will go away because it dries clear. I think that will kind of add something there. And maybe some of the green ones right here. Let's do three of them. I'll put a, a couple of these brown pearls at the top to bring some brown into that corner. And I'm calling that cover done. I wanted this to be a quick, easy, big payoff gift. So there's our cover. Now then, there was a couple other things I wanted to add to the inside. These came from the paper pad. These are some of the um, pieces on the tag pages, and I love how these look. And I thought they'd be pretty kind of in this area either like this or one on the back um, pocket too. So I'm going to adhere these down. Just like this. I thought the pins were very appropriate because you'll be writing in the cards. So I thought the little pen nibs was a good idea to put in there. And I'm going to go back to these blings and I'm going to use these little, no I think I'm going to use these little shiny. They are teeny tiny ones too. So I'm going to put little dots in these corners. like so and then put these little teeny tiny oh maybe the green ones for a little color on the inside they are teeny tiny y'all so there's some little bling on this page and then before I go back there I'm going to put one of these beautiful brads on this tag let me see which one I like this one I love all of these I'm going to use this one. So I'm just going to cheat by taking my X-Acto knife and just poke a hole in there. Just big enough for this brad to go through. Not even worry about pulling out my hole punch. And close that down. So that will get a little dimension. Because I don't want too much dimension on the inside of the book. Because a lot of cards will be going in here eventually. And then I'm going to put this back here. Okay. So here's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to go through, and you guys know that we have card parties all the time, and we make so many cards, and I have more cards than I will ever be able to get through. So what I'm going to do is fill this with some of the cards from my card party, so when I give this away, it'll be a filled gift, and when we come back to do the final walkthrough, I'll walk through with the cards inside so you can see them. <laughs> so here we go. Let's do a walkthrough. Look at this. It's full. It's such a cool thing. Okay, so you have the cover. All right, and then we have January, and I just put, I think I put, let's see, is this one? This is one card in here, in the January, and then in February, I made sure I put Valentine themed, a couple in there. This is March, that hot, the um, hot air balloon was cute, and then April gets an Easter bunny, <laughs> and then May, just some cute little lovely ones, and all the way through, I just put cards, and look, October gets Halloween, and December gets Christmas. So there you go, guys. I hope that is a quick, easy gift idea for you. Look at this. It'll even stand up on your desk because it's so full and it is so sturdy made out of that mat board. All right, guys. Have a great weekend, and I will talk to you on Monday with more crafting. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.